Right. CC Music says the, qu the question needs to happen, and even our own evidence based beliefs need to be revisited if for no other reason than confirmation. Right. And that's, there again, like we, it's easy to be subject to your own confirmation bias, right? Once you think, okay, I've, I'm onto something, I'm right, then your, your mind will naturally tend to seek out information that confirms your belief system. And so we all have to do this, no matter how right we think we are. Um, that is a, that is hard to do for people. And that's why we get trapped in this ego, right? And people can't admit when they're wrong or when evidence, new evidence comes out that goes against what they have basically built their career or their life or their following or whatever saying they can't turn back on that. Right. Because then that means that their entire belief system, their, all their axioms are, are destroyed. Right. But if you, if you go into something saying, I want to know the truth no matter what that truth might turn out to be. I want to know the optimal way for me to live, you know, however that might evolve over my lifetime. I want the best for my child, right? And I'm willing to look at different opinions and look at both sides and I'm willing to pivot and make different decisions based on new information that I learn. Then you actually are empowered. Like go back to So that's, you know, we all have to participate in that or we're all at risk for becoming blind to certain things that that we should see that maybe we wouldn't have seen if we weren't keeping our eyes open. You're welcome. And so, you know, it, it's easy it's easy for anybody to get comfortable in the place that you that you believe. You think, "Oh, I've got it all figured out," right? That's probably one of the most ignorant things any of us could say because none of us have it all figured out right and going back to this compartmentalization thing there's a reason for that that doctors specialize and medical professionals specialize in a certain area right because there's no way that one person could be good at or solve all of the you know like put all these pieces together because it's extremely extremely complex and that's where you kind of have this whole, just to go off on this tangent, it's like, that's where faith comes in. That's where this whole sort of spiritual realm comes into this whole thing is like, at, eventually you just have to let go of control and say, look, I don't freaking know how my body works. I don't know how I breathe all day and night without consciously thinking about it. I don't know how my heart beats for my entire life, never stops, never takes a break without me consciously telling it to do so, right? And so there has got to be something bigger than me. There's got to be something that knows more than any of us do, right? Because nobody's been able to figure it out as, as one person by themselves, you know, something that works for everybody. Like, so at, at some point, we've got to let go of that control and realize that we... We are just like life is just happening, whether we are focusing on it or not, right? So how can we align ourselves holistically? Again, going back to more of what we talked about in the beginning, how can we look at the emotional realm, the spiritual realm, as well as the physical realm and look at, you know, where we can grow in those areas, how those areas affect our physical health, how those areas um support healing and change and and growth and prosperity and whatever it is you know health or other contexts of life how do all those things integrate because we are all of those things simultaneously and so again like it it's easy to compartmentalize because it's just overwhelming to try to take in all of this information and figure all of it out Right. So we do need spe people that can specialize, but those people all need to be able to work together and talk to each other and understand enough about the other people's disciplines to be able to say, OK, here's how here's what I'm seeing in my day to day practice. What are you seeing and what can how can we combine our knowledge and find the common threads? Right. Find the common roots, find the common things. It's like, oh, this is why my patient keeps coming back with UTIs every six weeks or whatever, you know, whatever it is. Oh, and my patient over here is struggling with inflammation in this area. How, what are they, what is common between these two people, right? And letting, 
letting like letting go of some of the of the idea that we can really understand how this healing takes place and when you can let go of some of that that's again like it's it's counterintuitive it's counterintuitive to say if i let go of control then i'm going to heal if i let go of control of trying to like forcing this or trying so hard like sometimes the less you try the more successful you are because you're not forcing you're not trying to conform reality to the way you the specific way that you think it should be when you let go of control you let things just naturally unfold in the way that they should uh, with that in the path of the divine path for you in your life at this moment in time and so that's where yes like we should control i think what we eat we should put some boundaries around that you should you know, track if you need to from time to time. You, you know, I test my blood sugar, my ketones from time to time just to get some info, you know, but I've also learned when it's time to let go and when it's time to just cruise for a while and let the, let the intuition, let, you know, that, that spiritual realm come in so I can hear the next step that I couldn't have figured out. I couldn't have calculated on my own. I couldn't have figured it out with a doctor. I couldn't have figured it out, you know, by doing math and science. It's like, there are things that just spring up out of the 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 universal mind or the mind of god or universal consciousness whatever you want to call it there are things that just come up and present themselves in your life if you're looking if you're paying attention if you're if you're training your mind to look for the next step and then just letting go of the outcome that's when magic happens and that's pretty much in my life in in many different ways that's how i've ultimately figured out like okay this is the way i'm going to go or this is what i'm going to do next or i'm not going to be afraid to step forward into this new thing because i have faith that this this that this intuitive feeling is from a higher place right so i don't have to see the path in front of me i don't have to see every single step that's coming next and have control over that, right? And plan for every single thing or have a perfectionist attitude. All I have to do is let go, like put my, my intention out there, but then let go of the outcome, let go of controlling it in the way that I think it needs to be done. Listen for the intuition, listen for the guidance, and then follow it in faith, knowing it's, knowing my outcome's already done knowing that health is already mine, knowing that optimal radiant living that I want, the energy, the focus, the uh, positive emotion, all that stuff is already mine. And it's already all of ours because we were born complete. We were born. Oh, I'm getting emotional. We were born whole. You know, we were born with everything we need to be successful, loving, prosperous, beautiful, healthy human beings. Right? We only learn through life and the influences around us and our and negative experiences. We that's how we learn something different. And then we come to believe that, oh, maybe I don't deserve to be healthy. Maybe there's just something inherently wrong with me that can't be fixed. Maybe I'm not lovable. Maybe I'm not, you know, deserving of, of a good, healthy life. And all of that is false. All of that is that's the that's the opposite of truth and so sometimes that's the hardest part in this whole journey is just is getting rid of those limiting negative beliefs and going back to what's true and being willing and having like that's where the faith comes in having the faith to say no i don't care what the external circumstances are i don't care what is presented in front of me all i care about is that I know that this outcome that I want is already mine. And that's where you can let go in peace and just live your life knowing that the next step will be, you'll know the next step when it's time. You'll know the next place to go when it's the right time. And if you're looking for those signs and you're looking, you're listening to the intuition and you're willing to do the hard work and make the decisions that it takes to, you know, choose the thing that's best for you, then 
you will make that next step and then the next one will come. So it's like, that's where life gets beautiful, even, even in suffering or even in discomfort or even in uncertainty is if we remain attached to trying to control and being, you know, you know, the, the arbiter or the architect of every single outcome, right? We don't have to figure it out. You let God figure it out. You let the universe figure it out, or whatever your version of the higher power is, right? And then you just go with it. And that's hard for us to do, right? Because we want we want to hold on to the outcome. We want to we want to um, say that the outcome was us, right? And so that's all the 